This week on Maker Update, woodworking for Sith Lords, Simone's dog takes a selfie, wings of steel, a wiper motor coffee grinder, and Russian crowbars. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all hanging in there, staying motivated, but also finding time to take it easy. That's my hope for you. Uh, I have lots to talk about. Let's get started with the project of the week. You gotta check out Bob Claggett's Star Wars inspired server rack and entertainment center. This is a piece of furniture that Bob absolutely doesn't need, but when you have the space and the motivation to build a multimedia cabinet that looks like it was ripped out of the Death Star, you build the cabinet. Most of this design is just inexpensive MDF that's been glued and screwed together. To get the look right, it comes down to the finish and all of the finishing touches. Some of these finishing touches are Bob's own design, like the edge lit acrylic star map, or the large colored acrylic interface panels with 3D printed trim. Some of the other details though come by way of Brian Thompson from the Smuggler's Room YouTube channel. Halfway through this 30 minute video, you get a great interview with Brian on how he designs and reproduces the Star Wars style modeling Greeblies. If you're new to the idea of Greeblies, they're a creative mashup of random parts meant to achieve the look of something vaguely futuristic and technical, but at the same time, unrecognizable. There's a real art to it, and Brian shares some of his favorite techniques for getting it right. When you put it all together, the end result is just plain rad. Probably not how my wife would prefer me to decorate our house, but for a game room or a home office, it's the perfect antidote for IKEA overload. Now for more projects. You may have caught this one already, but I have to mention how Simone Yetch built this selfie booth for her dog. This is a fully automated dog-sized photo booth that dispenses dog treats and snaps photos with the press of a paw. I think it's a really fun idea, and maybe there's a cat treat version you could do for cats too? Simone's video was sponsored by LEGO, so naturally she made hers from LEGO and used their Mindstorm system for all the interaction and motors. Those kits are pretty pricey though, and I see no reason why you couldn't pull the same thing off with any number of inexpensive solutions. Personally, I'd go with a Raspberry Pi since you could integrate the camera and there are so many Pi photo booth projects already out there that you could borrow from. Still, it's an adorable video and the design has that perfectly quirky Simone touch. For something that is completely custom made, check out this motorized costume wing mechanism by Honus on Instructables. This is one of those designs that makes you marvel at the power of linkages. A single continuous rotation servo turns a lead screw that unfurls all four wing joints. It makes a hideous sound and it's not too quick, but mechanically it's beautiful and the simplified design allows it to be lightweight and low profile. Laura Kampf has a new video out showing how she was able to update this antique coffee grinder with a new hopper and motorized control. It's a great look into what a tasteful stockpiling of scavenged materials looks like. Laura is able to put an old wiper motor to use, some gear chain, some old sprockets, some aluminum flats and plywood, some hand lettering and a badass nameplate push it over the top. This is what I wish every item on Etsy looked like. It's funky, practical, and completely unique. Now for some tips and tools. Zach Friedman keeps cranking out great videos. One of his latest is this rundown of 10 3D printable tools every maker should have. Some of them are silly, like the Adafruit Feather Fingerboard, but there's a ton of great practical designs in here worth knowing about, including the screw sorting jig and the mother of all Dremel bit storage racks. On the Cool Tools channel, Sean Michael Reagan talks about Russian titanium crowbars. Super strong, but super lightweight compared to a traditional steel crowbar. You can pick them up on eBay, and one will probably last you your whole life. There were a couple of introductory videos I really enjoyed this week. One is an intro to Mesh Mixer by Billy Rubin. She has a number of videos on Mesh Mixer now, which is a great free tool for sculpting and repairing 3D designs. I also like this intro to the Arduino Fast LED Library by Scott Marley. This is the same maker who used the Fast LED Library to create LED matrix patterns across the irregular shape of a mask. It's one of the most impressive libraries for Arduino LED projects and I'm glad to have a way in to learn more about it. 
On Tested, Adam Savage is recommending tools left and right these days. In one video, he goes over some of his favorite vintage and new folding rulers, some of which include a modest angle finder. But when your angle finding needs are more demanding, Adam has a separate video demonstrating a classic inexpensive angle finder. These are more of an angle transfer since it's not really clear what the angle measurement is. There's an updated version of these that you can get with the digital readout. I did a cool tools review of them a few years back and I still use them, they've held up. I'll include a link in the show notes. Finally, on Tindy, I came across these chainable micro LED displays from Lixie Labs. These can be driven from an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or an ESP8266 or 32. They only need two pins. The documentation for them looks really good. I love unique displays and these definitely hit that sweet spot. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their new video comparing the Microbit version 1.5 to the version 2 due out in November. Last week I mentioned some key differences, the microphone and the speaker, but there are some other useful specs to know about. You get double the flash, a dramatic bump in RAM from 16 to 128, an updated Bluetooth spec, and a logo that can be used as a capacitive touch pin. Check out the video for even more details. All right, that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, get on the Maker Update email list if you want. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for being so supportive and making all this possible. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.